All right, here we are back in the basement, home of the wings. And today's plan is to disassemble, uh, remove the uh, aileron, remove the wing tip, and uh, balance the ailerons. I uh, already took that one off yesterday, off of the right side, and uh, no, sorry, left side. And I remember these are kind of a pain to get in and out, so I was just trying to see what I was in for. I think uh, the flaps I can just disconnect and do this. Part of the reason I'm doing this is so we can actually fit them out that door, so that lowers the cord length by significant amount um, and also less chance of them getting banged up hopefully so that's that and what else oh yeah on this wing tip on the right side we're going to install this uh, VHF antenna I'm just going to glue it inside the wing tip but I got to run the coax cable retro through there but this should be accessed through all the panels um, I was looking at it yesterday I can get through all the grommets and then lace it along there so hopefully that won't be too big of a deal but uh yeah anyway that's today's project and uh also supporting the cleveland tool guys i got my shirt so i'm pretty excited about that and uh yeah i guess they were kind of struggling after the whole van's disaster and do whatever you can to help plus it keeps me warm all right here we go Yeah, I got them out and obviously I got them in at some point, but it looks like they must have been a pain back then because I put little uh, tabs on it to probably keep me from losing them while I'm trying to assemble it. But um, let's see, yeah, I had to grind my little 3 8 wrench down to get past a rivet in there, but I also ground the one for the engine mount, so that's good there. Um, the other thing I found useful is a little magnet. This is just a tiny little whatever pinup magnet to uh, catch washers again to keep them from falling into the abyss inside the wing and then somebody had recommended this so I bought it this is the first time I was actually using it this is a, a tool to help hold the washers to get them in and out again as you're pulling the bolt out so they don't fall into the abyss um, what I think I did last time is I actually put tape around here to keep them from falling all the way down uh, I guess I'll probably do that during assembly but then again assembly hopefully will be on the plane so anyway some useful tips now wing tips the wing tips are held on by eight or so quarter inch uh, bolts they do have a Phillips head in them but I found this little tool quite uh, useful I honestly don't remember where I got it. it was probably like a micro center checkout counter or something but it's low profile and it has a long a low uh, throw so this is just a quarter inch magnetic Milwaukee bit in there but it allows you to kind of get in there and just keep ratcheting away to get the bolts out All right, 10 minutes to get eight bolts out. Not too bad, I guess. And uh, worth noting is that I do the hardest ones. Basically, this is like the easiest one to get to from this position. So I do that one last. So I don't struggle with trying to hold a wrench in a weird place. So get all the hard ones first and then the reverse probably the same. Put the easy one in first. And obviously this is in the comfort of a warm basement sitting on a rack at a comfortable level. This is uh, probably different if you're doing it uh, overhead.
All right, getting the RG400 from here to here to here to here was easy into this bay. There's no opening other than down there. And I thought I could kind of reach through there and fish it through, but that wasn't happening. So that was a little bit more of a struggle than I wanted to bore you with on the video. Um, but here, here's where I'm at right now. I basically took a uh, wire tie, uh, sorry, this is like one of those long nylon wire ties that you can buy at Home Depot, 36 inches long. And I use them as snakes. So I fed one this way. The grommets I have in there are, are plenty big. I don't know if you can see that, but I fed one this way and I fed one this way and I got it to go through this bay and I was able to reach and bend this one through this bay. So I connected them and hopefully that along with some soapy water will be, uh, make this happen. <laughs> success 2024 got it through here um, two things you obviously want to be careful of is that as you're pulling it through that you don't um, you know put too much tension on it and pull a grommet through that would be bad and that you don't wrap it around any unwanted wires or cables like the uh, aileron cables you have in there because yeah that would be kind of shitty if you uh, get it all in and then just find out it's wrapped around the aileron cable and you got to do it all again but all right, one more task done. Okie doke, back upstairs. Did a little bit of reorganization, kind of getting ready to see the light at the end of the tunnel of this project as, long, as far as at the house here. Uh, this is the elevator and the horizontal stabilizer. And jumping back and forth, I'm on to trying to balance the ailerons, okay? So I had these things uh, machined. They have the cutouts for the rivet in there. And then we also had a, a custom divot machined into there to hold the cup. I'm totally kidding. I have no idea where these things came from, but they're gonna work perfect for what I need. And they weigh a little bit less than an ounce each. Like, uh, they come up with point, point 0.9 ounces or something on the scale. So let's put some weight in it. We're going to need a bigger boat. Good thing we eat a lot of yogurt. Oh wow, maybe just a tad bit over, but I think we nailed it. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's gonna wanna go to the other side here, but uh, yeah, I think that's a good start. And the verdict is three pounds, 4.1 ounces. And that is for either side. We got them, got them the same. So the total weight needed is 52.1 ounce. The cup peg and the wire weigh 2.2 and then the rest is lead. So that'll get us in the ballpark. All right, let's see what kind of mess we can make here. I got my home seal and I use the uh, all season. So we're gonna replace that with plane and make sure you use this so you can fly your plane all season long. Joke. And uh, I guess some people have had better luck going a little deeper because of the amount of lead that we need. So I took a piece of brake line and modified it to fit uh, about 18 inches on there and I also have this little tube so I'm gonna do a little test piece to see how uh, it expands in there so I know how long to squirt it for.
worked out pretty good. That's my test tube. Um, this was a one second squirt in a one and a half or one and five eighths or bigger tube. So that didn't quite fill it. So this is only a one inch tube or maybe one and an eighth or a quarter or something like that. And I did a two second squirt and a, a little extra. So I don't know if you can tell, you can see inside there, but uh, anyway, I verified that it's sealed. So while that is drying, I'm moving on to this antenna. So this is the VHF antenna that we're using for navigation. So it's got to be mounted this way for communication. It's got to be mounted vertically. So I'm going to stick it inside here. So I measured like, I uh, made a couple of marks between three and four inches in. And I'm going to tape that off. And I'm actually going to put it on with contact um, cement. So checking off the list one by one. That contact cement worked out great. Yeah, I don't think that puppy's going anywhere. I also put on the uh, BNC connector at the end of this cable I ran earlier. So that's all ready to go. Let's check in on the spray foam. So remember that plug that I didn't think was going to seal this much bigger tube? Well, it did. So. I'm very confident that it's sealed in there. And I think those are ready, it's been several hours. And I'm also gonna fill the holes on the elevator while I'm at it. The foam factory is ready and prepped. Uh, in case I overshoot it, put some uh, tape around there. Gonna fill those in. Gonna fill these in with the BBs. I added 2.2 ounces into each one of those again, which is the weight of the cup and the peg and the wire and the foam is going to take up the 0, 0.00 ounce which will mimic the paint maybe maybe not who knows but uh... <laughs> space I think uh, I have to do a little more research so this is where the foam plug is it's from here to here I measured it by sticking a tape measure on either side so I might have to carve some of that out to make room for that oopsie I must have the lightweight lead lightweight lead <laughs> effort of making my see-through uh, plug tube here to see what's going on. Anyway, I made this thing. I was hoping that I could just kind of push that down a little bit, but it kind of got soft and soggy. So the can says that it dries in four hours, um, but I think that's the outside, not the inside. So the inside is still gooey. So I feel like I broke the part that was dry on the top by pushing it down, because I pushed it down to almost 18, 19 inches on both sides, which is fine, but I don't want it to blow through on the other side. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight and we will resume in the morning. So for now, good night. All right, I'm almost too, too embarrassed to record this, but here's what happened. So uh, impatient Freddy here, while this was curing, and there was just a slight skin on it. I stuck this in on both sides to measure it, which is how I came up with that. And I must have disturbed the curing process. And then later on, I stuck this thing in there. And then uh, that's when you saw that uh, I was letting it dry overnight. So this morning, they came down all excited 
to see if, if that was solid enough to stuff the uh, uh, lead in there <laughs> and literally it just pushed through and fell out the other side so the skin had just kind of disintegrated and it was no good so this morning I pumped in some more spray foam and I'm happy to report that now we got 18 inches and I did a little research too so I, and some people recommend it to actually mix it up with the uh, epoxy like we did in the elevator so I'm going to do that here too for two reasons a the epoxy is going to keep the BBs solid the, uh, the lead shot and also it will add probably three or four ounces of weight in between there that I can take off the lead to make sure that it doesn't overflow again um, well with that being said if it does overflow then I'm in serious trouble but um, we'll figure that out so we'll give that a shot Now that the whole house stinks of fiberglass, we want to see how long it takes for the <laughs> my girls to complain. You're not here to complain about the smell? No, I was going to ask her if Phillips had a screwdriver. The what? Phillips had a screwdriver. I do, yeah. Close the door before mom complains. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> Perfect timing, but at least it wasn't a complaint. I got the door open and I got the fan going. And uh, I'm glad to report that my rivet holes aren't leaking the resin out. Um, looks like it's settling. I made this piece here to just make sure that the resin doesn't like disintegrate that on me. I could just imagine that I pour it in and it all comes out the other end and then I got a real mess. But it doesn't seem to so now I got a glass covered foam ball uh, if anybody's interested. Alright I'll let you know how it comes out. the well-deserved ending of how Derek balances ailerons. A bit of an adventure, but the resin hardened good. Uh, I just put some spray foam in the top. This time I'll let it set up overnight, chop it off in the morning, and uh, kind of just wondering why we need to put all that weight in there. Isn't there a way to geometrically design this so you don't have to add you know six pounds of seven pounds of extra weight like they were nice and light now they got some substance but like always there's smarter people than me inventing this stuff or designing it and uh it's coming out good thank you for watching and uh happy building see ya